Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here. Welcome back to another two by one video and to another Q&A, Ask MKBHD number 33. We do this once a month and it is October. It's not over yet. It's a very busy Techtober. But we're in it, we asked you guys what you wanted to know on Twitter and you had plenty of questions, of course, so these are the best of those. All right, so thoughts on Apple screwing the OnePlus event. Okay, this was kind of funny, depending on how you look at it, but also kind of unfortunate. Uh, it's a symptom of this busy Techtober season. So OnePlus made it very clear that they're going to be announcing their OnePlus 6T in New York in an event in the morning on October 30th. Then Apple, big company, but I'm sure they've been planning their event for a while too. They've also made an announcement for an October event. They're gonna have an event also in New York, also in the morning, also on October 30th. So naturally, OnePlus, a smaller company, kind of bent to that and moved their event to the 29th. It's not just that they don't wanna be overshadowed by Apple, I'm sure that's like on their mind, but also a lot of people covering tech, a lot of journalists, a lot of YouTubers, people like me, we're gonna to go to both. We're gonna to go to OnePlus's event and we're gonna to go to Apple's event. And if a lot of people are going to both, they have to pick. And OnePlus didn't want people to not be able to go to their event. That was a big part of it. So they moved their event forward a day to the 29th. So now it's gonna be the 29th, OnePlus, the 30th, Apple. I don't think they did it on purpose or anything. I think they both were planning their event uh, a long time ago, but it's just kind of unfortunate that there's just not enough days left in October. How was the JRE, the Joe Rogan experience? That was a fun podcast. If you guys haven't seen that, I did go on the Joe Rogan podcast. Uh, we shot that yesterday, the video is live. I'll drop a link with a like button if you wanna watch it. If you watch it back, it's like two and a half hours and we talked about a lot of stuff, a lot of tech included, some other topics included as well. So. Uh, but it was fun. Joe knows actually probably more about tech than people give him credit for. Well, I'm not a case person. Yeah, you don't have any cases, huh? No, nah, I don't do cases. Look at you. Yeah. But you switch phones so often, even if you drop them. That's what people always ones, say. Pop a SIM card out. I still take good care of my phones. People are like, oh, you get a new phone every two weeks. You might be right, but I still take really good care of my phone. Oh, someone asked, how was your Streamies experience? That was also pretty fun. So uh, for those who don't know, I recently attended the Streamy Awards in LA and Beverly Hills and we actually won a Streamy Award for the Science or Education category. That was incredible. Here goes to... Oh, Marquise Brownlee! Now, I didn't really push for this. I completely did not expect to win, but when the cameras and the lights hit and they said that I won the category, that was pretty amazing. Um, I think there should be a tech category though. Like I'm not trying to hate or anything and I'm not an expert on award shows, but on YouTube there's definitely a distinguished tech community and also a, a distinguished science and education community and a lot of the other channels in that category, who I love by the way, uh, were nominated for those, those science and tech and education reasons. And I think a separate science and tech category, specifically consumer tech, would deserve its own category too. Nonetheless though, I'm very grateful for all of your support and I'm, that's the only reason that we won that award, so I'm really happy about that. Uh, but overall, the experience was fun. The show, if you watched it, was very interesting uh, and I hope to be back. Uh, John, good old John Four Lakers, the OG, says he saw my Pixel 3 screen issues and he says he's had a boot loop issue with his uh, do I still recommend the device? So I'll actually show you what mine looks like. This is my Pixel 3 XL right now, and if you'll notice, uh, it has a stripe, a pink stripe straight down the middle, a full brightness stripe of dead pixels uh, completely in the center of the display. So that's pretty strange. I feel like I've had bad luck with phones this year. I looked it up. If you look up a pink stripe down the phone's display issue, it's something that's happened in the past with other phones. Often Samsung phones or phones with Samsung panels. This is a Samsung panel. And uh, there's no real guaranteed fix for it. It's just kind of a thing that happens. It sucks, now I can't use this phone anymore and I'll have to get a new one and it's probably gonna be replaced super soon, but that's that's terrible. It's a quality control issue. It's, it's not gonna happen to everyone's. In fact, it's probably gonna happen to almost no other phones, hopefully anyway. But like I said, I feel like I've had bad luck. I might've remembered uh, or you might remember a couple days or weeks ago, my Razer phone 2, straight out the box, was completely unresponsive. I had to wipe it and start over from the bootloader to get it to actually work again to my screen touches, which, again, 
that's super rare, right? Like if this starts happening to a lot of people's phones, then yeah, I'll stop recommending it. And it does seem like Pixel's had a lot of weird things happen to it lately that are unfortunate, but uh, I still feel the same way about it. Oh, this is a really sad question. Do you think phone companies that have done away with the headphone jack will ever bring it back? No, I don't think it's gonna, it's like a floppy drive. Not that it's the same age, but like once people have just gotten on board with getting rid of a port, it usually doesn't come back. We often have a lot of rumors and leaks about flagship phones, uh, but we cannot say the same about tablets or computers, like the upcoming iPad Pro. What are your expectations about the Apple event, considering the few details we have by now? It's a good question, but I think that's actually discounting how much has leaked about these new iPads. We actually kind of also already know what to expect with the new iPad. The new specs, the new A12, the new display, the smaller bezels, the face ID that works in portrait or landscape, all these things, are coming to iPad Pro. You can read articles about it. It hasn't leaked like people having a physical iPad in their hands. There's no unboxings online of it before it's come out, but we kind of know what to expect. I'll leave a really good article below that links to like pretty much everything we're gonna see at this October event. Why do you only talk about phones? Saying quality tech videos as your tagline. Uh, it's just kind of all that's been coming out over the past few weeks. I keep using this hashtag techtober to refer to all this stuff that's coming out in like September, October, November, but mostly this month, uh, which is just a whole lot of new phones and things coming out right before the holiday season. So you get your stocking stuffers and you get your new stuff, um, but we've done all kinds of other videos before this holiday season push. We started a series all about cars not that long ago called Autofocus and a whole bunch of stuff about cameras and we've done a whole bunch of stuff about other tech, but yeah, this, this particular time of year, if you look back at the last couple of videos, it's a lot of phones. Okay, here's a good one, and maybe you guys can play along. You can pick between two different things for your device superpower, 30 days of battery life, or free one gigabit internet connection 24 seven. Choose only one. Go ahead and write yours. I already know what mine is. It's pretty easy. I'm picking the free, super fast, incredible internet because I already have a solution to the first battery problem, which is just, I charge my phone every day, but there is no solution to bad Wi-Fi, bad internet. There's dead spots around New Jersey and New York. There's bad airplane Wi-Fi that I just dealt with last night. So to always have the, the phone superpower of always having lightning fast internet, videos never buffer, nothing ever lags or stutters as far as streaming, that's, uh, that's where I'm gonna go. All right, so what convinced you to go to the two to one aspect ratio for your videos and why not 60 frames per second? So that's two different questions. On the 60 frames per second, I'm, I'm not a big fan. Like I, I've tried other frame rates for videos. I've tried 24 frames per second. To me, 24 frames per second on the screens that you're watching that are all calibrated towards multiples of 30, things look choppy. Pans look choppy, smooth motion looks choppy, 24 FPS looks bad to me. And then 60 FPS looks too smooth. Now I can say there are some advantages to being smooth as far as showing animations and stuff, but for that I prefer slow-mo, so I'm pretty much 30 FPS for life. But then why did I switch to this two to one aspect ratio? Honestly, it's just a little bit more fun. Hear me out. Like I'm fully aware that on, on TVs and laptops and most people's phones and computers, uh, you're, you're 16 by nine. Like you're used to watching 16 by nine videos with minimal or no black bars. That is true. But then I decided to give it a shot. I can blame some of the guys in the studio for making me give it a shot, but I gave it a shot. I can blame John a little bit for that too. Um, but it turns out on this particular camera I'm using, it has some mathematical advantages. The Monstro 8K sensor that I shoot with in this red camera, when I shoot in 16 by nine, it crops in a little bit. When I shoot in two to one, I'm actually getting more width to this gigantic sensor and it just looks better. It's just, it just looks better to me. And a motif on the channel for a very long time as far as me talking to the camera and a lot of shots has been wide angle, shallow depth of field. It's very personal. I'm right here next to the camera, uh, but I can be even closer to the camera when it's this wide. And uh, it's just more fun to play with framing with other stuff in the left and right of me. And when you do top downs and you do all sorts of other stuff, you might've seen that last Pixel 3 video has a lot of really interesting shots that look different from a 16 by nine shot. So without diving into all the nerdy gritty details of two to one, basically we're just having fun with it. We're playing with it. I think I like it for now. Hopefully you can deal with the little extra black bars for the extra little fun we get to have. All right, I'm gonna end it at that. 
A lot of good questions for October, but also a lot of videos upcoming in these last couple days, and it'll bleed into November too, and there's a lot of stuff happening, but thank you for your questions, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the very next video. Peace.